Welcome back to Pape Toolkit. Today, I get to share with you a childhood dream of mine in the form of a new piece of equipment. Let's go over the 485A backhoe. So when I was little and I was playing in the sandbox as a child, I'm not sure if you've ever seen one of these, but they have those mechanical kind of backhoe apparatuses that just dig and you can move dirt from one area to the other. I've always wanted one of those and honestly through a marital compromise, I was able to purchase this 485A backhoe for my own tractor. My backhoe is outfitted currently with a nine inch bucket on it, a mechanical thumb that I can obviously adjust um, to different locations so I can pick stuff up. Um, it's just the standard 485A backhoe, uh, and it's gonna go onto my 4052R cab tractor. Uh, it's a really, really nice feat of engineering. I'll tell you what, there is a few implements in our catalog that really kind of outshine everything else. Uh, this backhoe, hooking it up, taking it on and off, is probably one of the simplest functions for one of the most complex tools that you can outfit your tractor with. I want to go ahead and share, um, just reiterate some of those tips and tricks that we've got. So first tip one, bring a rag with you. The hydraulic fluid does seem to get all over the place. Um, so it's really nice to have a rag with you. Um, it's not spraying out too crazy, but it's it's definitely gets all over your hands. You don't want to get it in your nice cab or your tractor. Um, so that's tip number one is, is carry a rag. Uh, tip number two, so um, things that I've noticed, if the backhoe sits out in the weather and the heat uh, of the sun, these hydraulic lines are all coated uh, with black. So that black warms up and it expands the hydraulic fluid in it. So sometimes what I'll need to do is I can take that towel and I can pull off the connector. So if I've got the connector and you see that it's got the, um, there's a tip right at the end that's gonna have some back pressure on it. What I can do is I can take my rag over that and I can smack it against the frame of the backhoe and that will release some of that hydraulic pressure that may be pent up behind that tip. Uh, that works for loaders, that works for all sorts of hydraulic devices, um, but that's a nice tip to know uh, if I'm trying to get this thing connected and it just won't go. So when I have a customer call me, that's pretty much the first thing I try to tell them to do is, hey, take a towel, wrap it over the end of that, connect, that, that fitting and smack it. Just be really careful, don't try to don't mangle the end of that fitting, um, but just get, get enough to release some of that pressure. And you'll feel it release in there. So that would be tip number two. Tip number three is more of kind of an observation slash tip. So um, one of the times when I took off my backhoe um, and my teeth weren't flat level with the ground, I think the, the, the terrain was a little uneven, kind of like it is here today. Um, over time, the backhoe hydraulics drifted off. What I mean is that they, they, they depressurized a bit and the backhoe kind of sunk down on the ground. You don't see it as often with these 485As and 385A backhoes, but on our smaller ones, you see it quite often is that, that those hydraulics will drift off. So sometimes what you have to do is you have to connect the hydraulics a little bit early so you can get that back up into place. Um, and so what I would recommend is just pay a special attention when you first put it down, that it's gonna sit level and that when this hydraulic cylinder does kind of lose a little bit of pressure or depressurize, um, that it won't kind of move on you. But if it does, it's not the end of the world. Um, it's really easy, just connect the hydraulics a little bit earlier, kind of get it back up into shape and, and go from there. Uh, so that would be kind of observation and tip number three. I'm gonna leave you with one tip, one final tip. Uh, this is tip number four. Um, and I, I think it has to do with bucket selection. Um, so you're gonna have multiple different buckets out there. I had the propensity to go for the biggest bucket I could pretty possibly get um, that sounded the coolest on paper. So I got the 18 inch heavy duty. That's technically not the biggest one you can get. I think you can get a 24. But long and short, it said heavy duty on it. So I was like, oh, that's the one I want. Well, when I'm digging out stumps, which is primarily what I use this for on my property, 
I tend to see, tend to, tend to think that the actual, the smaller size is gonna be the better one because I'm gonna pop roots and stuff like that and I'm gonna have a little bit more hydraulic force with a smaller bucket. So that's why right now I have this outfitted with a nine inch bucket. So tip number four, choose the bucket that's appropriate for the job that you're doing and, and when in doubt, buy multiple buckets like I do. So in conclusion, this 485A uh, back, backhoe has been just a great investment for me on my property. Um, it's, it's really been nice to, to be able to get out those hard stumps. I've got a lot of cedar trees and a lot of oak trees that are you know, kind of impeding the look of my property and I wanted to get those out and, and, and make it look a lot better. Uh, this was also a bit of comp a compromise like I talked about earlier. Uh, honestly, I probably wanted a mini excavator if I'm being honest with everybody around me. Uh, but the budget wouldn't really allow for a mini excavator. This is a fraction of the price. Um, now it doesn't do everything that a mini excavator does, but at the end of the day, it does what I need it to do on my property. And so I was happy to compromise with my wife. So thank you to her. Um, and I really appreciate that. This device was kind of a surprising love of mine. I didn't think I was going to like the backhoe as much as I did. I've used some of our smaller backhoes before. They're great tools. Um, but this particular one in this configuration is, it's just a beast of a hard worker. It works and it does everything I ask it to when I ask it to do it. Uh, and it's held up. I'm very hard on my equipment. This piece of equipment so far is held up. Um, I, I'm very excited to, to continue to use it and to get, can, can continue to give you my feedback on this kind of equipment. So uh, if you're in the market for a 485A backhoe, please come see us. If you're in the market for any backhoe, Pape Machinery is here to help. If you've got something to add to this equation, uh, please comment down below. Uh, like and subscribe the channel, you know, all that good stuff. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you next time on Pape Toolkit. Hi, my name is Jason Hughes. I'm a territory manager out of Eugene, Oregon. I'm also a large property owner and own a lot of the equipment that you see featured in these videos. I hope you find this content helpful. If you have any questions, please comment below.